Brew Strong is brought to you by Blickman Engineering, home of the top-tier brewing stand. Visit them online at BlickmanEngineering.com. Time for the beer radio you've been looking for. This is the show that dispels myths, tackles the toughest topics, and makes no apologies for geeking out on beer. Hosted by two guys that drink before they think, Jamil Zainashev and John Palmer. This is Brew Strong. Hey, howdy, hey, my Bruin brothers and sisters. Greetings, greetings. Uh, it's the Cretan himself. How you doing today? <laughs> doing good. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, I was thinking uh, thinking a lot more about, uh, you know, the, the pro side of things. Every time when we were getting ready to do one of these shows, I, we're, we're, and for those people listening, um, we're, we're still in the midst of the uh, pro-gasm here. Yes. Uh, the the topic that keeps on giving, mm. but uh, we um, uh, you know every time I'm, I'm driving to the show, I start thinking about all the things that I'm doing and stuff I could talk about. And and the other day, I I drove from uh, Sacramento to San Luis Obispo <laughs> to do an event, wow. hung around to the event till like you know ten o'clock. And then drove back home. Got home by uh, like uh, you know three three something in the morning. Oh, long ass day, but that's a you know ends up being the kind of thing you end up uh, having to do in order to uh, you know take care of business. That's right. That's you know that's our, our end of the industry is we're we we're a service industry and uh, we want to <laughs> service people. Yeah, you know, we want to. <laughs> We want to be of good service. Be of servicing, servicing. And well, and uh, uh, the other thing I do when I'm when I'm driving on, you know, like the five hour drive down to San Luis, both Obispo. hands on the wheel, right? <laughs> well, um, is uh, I listen to a lot of the uh, the old Sunday sessions and stuff like that. I catch oh, up yeah, on yeah. on my my listening, and uh, uh, just recently I was listening to the uh, the Pete Schlossberg episode. Uh, yeah, so Sunday session. It's a classic. That's, yeah, that's going back to. Um, uh, I'm not sure what the date was on that one. That was um, uh, April 1st of 07. Wow, 2007. 2007. Yeah. So, um, and the reason I bring it up is because Pete talks about it. Justin interviews him about um, you know how he started Pete's Wicked Ales. And the the thing that Pete gives is really some great insight into the business and and what made Pete's Wicked Ale successful. I mean, they they grew that up in yeah you know ten years to you know half million barrels a year of production. They went public right. You know, they sold that thing, and you know it was like uh, you know ten years. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you're thinking about opening a brewery i would uh you know some of the vice may be different than what i recommend but i think it's all really solid stuff from pete yeah. pete's a really a brilliant guy and uh oh yeah he's he had other insights a couple so. other careers since then i mean he's always yeah, coming the, up with new ideas and the coco pete's uh chocolate thing and uh yeah he's always uh always doing something new but uh if you get a chance download that uh that episode of the session and listen to it i think it's it's well worth it if you're interested in open a brain even if you're not it's it's always a great show to listen to and uh speaking of great things our wonderful sponsor john blickman oh no i wasn't oh. that yeah yeah actually <laughs> yeah blickman engineering blickman engineering.com blickman with two n's uh go check them out they've been sponsoring this show uh for uh, three years maybe oh, more than that how long have we been doing this show I don't know. <laughs> it's like five years or so. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose he's been on since like. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's three years or so. I, I think I approached him about it in Oakland. So NHC a couple, three, four years ago. He come up behind him with a knife and say, buddy, 
<laughs> I just kind of reached around and, and you know, put the question <laughs> oh, to him. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, uh, John Bluthman's a nice guy and uh, a great company. They make a lot of uh, very innovative products, as JP likes to say. Blickman Engineering, innovating your your brew day. Um, and uh, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, they got a lot of really cool, fascinating stuff that, uh, you know, honestly, you can make beer with a couple of plastic buckets. Yeah. But, mm, you know. I'll tell you this, making beer on a top-tier system with his, you know, right. controllers is fun. Well, it's always fun, but. This was really funny. You know, it, it, I was it makes it a lot more last fun. week. Yeah, and it makes it more consistent. Mm-hmm. And I think with consistency, become you you have uh, the opportunity to improve your beer because uh, you know when things are inconsistent, uh, you're not sure if the changes you made are making right. the difference or right. if it's just the fact that you can't get consistent mash temperatures and you can't you know things like that. So. Uh, yeah, I I think uh, Blickman uh, top tier with the uh, Tower of Power. I think it's a that's the way to go. Anyways, uh, check them out BlickmanEngineering dot com. Uh, Blickman with two N's and uh, send John a, an email telling him uh, how much you appreciate that they sponsor the show. We cer- certainly do. All right, uh, today I got an email from uh, from uh, Tommy, and he is opening a. Uh, his uh, house of Pendragon Brewing Company, and he was asking, mm. and, and and he's uh, uh, in Fresno, California, and he's going to open his next. He says, "Hello, Jay Z and John. I'm a pro brewer in Fresno, California. About to open my own brewery in the next month or so. Love listening to your going pro shows. They really help think about issues I have never contemplated. I want to see if you can do a show on properly pricing kegs for sale. Pretty sure I have listened to all the shows and haven't really heard this topic." I'm wrong, please let me know. Give a shot. Um, if you have any direction you point me in, in the meantime, for that info, that would also be greatly appreciated. Um, yeah, so I got this email uh, on the 13th. And, yeah, I remember uh, that one. Or no, he was he sent it on the 9th. So I said, all right, you know, we'll do a show Friday for you. So uh, hopefully he's listening. Yeah, it fits in well with the whole program series yeah i think uh, you know when he mentioned i'm like that's a that's a great idea we didn't cover this topic and and really i mean we kind of talked about pricing things in a way and how that uh, you know goes with your whole overall costs and business mm-hmm. plan micro but we right, didn't right. talk about the actual pricing in the marketplace you know how do you set your prices relative to other things so um uh I, th- I think you know it's it's difficult to talk about in in one context because we're in California and sure. the rules in California are going to be different than oh, probably there's probably fifty different rules yeah. for the for the different states and internationally it'll be different still so uh, it becomes a little tricky but I think there there's some things we can talk about the rules for California we can also talk about and how that affects some of our pricing decisions and then um, we can get into some sample. Uh, ideas about you know what's selling for what and you know how um, how I priced our products and how I've seen other people price their products. Why don't we do this? Why don't we take a, a short break and when we come back we can get into um, uh, I don't know uh, the rules first or yeah rules and then like then the different options. Okay, all right. Let's uh, take a short break. Back after this. When you hear Blickman Engineering, think innovation, passion, quality, and customer service. Blickman Gear is designed by brewers to give you a sense of pride in your equipment. At Blickman, they know what makes brewing a pain and build gear that makes it fun. Like the Intuitive Beer Gun, a completely different approach to filling bottles. The Therminator Wart Chiller, a new take on a plate chiller that's sized for flow, performance, and the high groundwater temps home brewers face every day. The Brewmometer, a brilliant weld thermometer design with brewing parameters right on the dial. The Auto Sparge, ultimate simplicity for preventing an overflow or running your mash tun dry. And much more, like the modular top-tier brewing stand, conical fermenters, and their boiler maker brew pots. With more cutting-edge equipment coming soon, keep up with the latest from Blickman at BlickmanEngineering.com and stay on the cutting edge. 
Where can you still find 795 Nationwide Shipping, a friendly, knowledgeable staff, and all of the stuff to brew for less? Homebrew Stuff. <laughs> Isn't the homebrew stuff a sexual maneuver? Homebrew Stuff is the largest homebrew supplier in the Northwest and can be found in Garden City, Idaho, and online at homebrewstuff.com. Equipment and ingredients for brewing beer and wine, soda and liquors, books, instructional DVDs, beginner kits, and a great selection of grain and hops. Homebrew Stuff also has dozens of free videos online to help make brewing easier. Visit homebrewstuff.com now for the best prices with their match or beat guarantee. BN Army members can take 10% off their first order with the coupon code BN Army. Kegs, regulators, faucets, towers, carboys, conicals, barrels, you name it. Get your homebrew stuff for less at homebrewstuff.com. Homebrew stuff, <laughs> not a sexual maneuver. Just the best prices and great service on all the stuff you need. Homebrewstuff.com. Hey, my brewing brothers and sisters, this is Jamel Zanisha, and I love a bold, hoppy beer, one that spits resin in your face and makes you cry, Uncle. There are a lot of great hoppy beers out there, but at Heretic, we want to make something as bold, dank, and resiny as possible. We use hops at every chance we get, including multiple dry hop additions. The result is Heretic Evil Cousin. This light golden, 8% Imperial IPA has an easy malt character that helps take the edge off the massive bittering but it takes a back seat to the in-your-face hop character. We make sure this beer finishes dry so the hops can jump out and slam me in the taste buds. If you can't get enough hoppy goodness, Evil Cousin is your cup of tea. Cheers. What'd you get? More brewing ingredients? Yep. You know what I love about Brewmaster's Warehouse? The $6.99 shipping. Well, yeah, but... Oh, the in-store classes for beginning brewers. Yeah, that's cool, but... Oh, oh, the brew builder. Creating and saving your recipes online is... Awesome! No, I'm... Yes, but... The cheese-making supplies. No. Oh, the wine-making supplies. <sighs> oh, the distilling equipment and liquor flavorings. All that stuff is awesome, yes, but what I really love is that the guy who runs it is totally hot. And, and that brew builder software is awesome. Oh, yeah. Brewmaster's Warehouse brings you flat rate shipping on great equipment and ingredients to make beer, wine, cheese, and spirits at brewmasterswarehouse.com. And if you're in Georgia, stop by Brewmaster's Warehouse Monday through Saturday from 10 to 6. Visit brewmasterswarehouse.com today because it's totally hot. Oh, yeah. Since the first time the Brewing Network microphones turned on, more beer was behind it. More Beer sponsors the programming on the BN because, like you, they love brewing. And like the Brewing Network, they love sharing their knowledge. MoreBeer.com isn't just a website to place your next equipment or ingredient order. MoreBeer.com also gives you access to free beer information that will make you a better brewer. Go to MoreBeer.com and click into the Learning Center. You'll find podcasts, technical facts, video tutorials, and more, including access to The Buzz, more beer social network of more than 5,000 members. And some of them might even be crazier about beer than you are. Get over to morebeer.com today and take advantage of the buzz, the forum, the learning center, and make sure you're signed up to receive the newest More Beer catalog. More Beer, bringing you absolutely everything for beer making. Back to the two guys that know how to turn beer into beer. This is Brew Strong. Yeah. I always love that. <laughs> it gets me fired up. Fired up. Well, <clears throat> and the thing that doesn't get me fired up is pricing. Yeah, it's rather tedious and boring to talk about, isn't it? Right, I mean that's why we're here. You just want, yeah. That's why we we bring the the tea to tedium. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> or we we bring the dumb to tedium. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny. Um, it was close. <laughs> yeah, yeah, made me laugh. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, you know. Uh, so, like we we're saying before the break, uh, certain states have certain rules on pricing. And I, even on collecting money, like mm-hmm. some states, you deliver the beer, it's COD. You cannot give people beer without collecting the money for it. 
you know, like a retailer, wholesaler, whatever. California is a 30 day state. So you, you give your beer over and then you got to wait a month to see if you get paid. Mm-hmm. You know, so it can be very tricky working with, you know, smaller retail locations that, you know, yeah. maybe running a lousy business and then, you know, they never pay you. Right. Not um, that that's ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> happened to everybody. Yeah. Um, but uh, one of the other rules in California is that uh, the prices have to be posted, and they're posted by county. Hmm. So for every county, unless you can say, oh, well, you know, this county is so geographically split, you know, half of it's on one side of the mountain, half of it's on the other side of the mountain, and it takes an hour to get to the other side, so... You know, that side of the county I have to charge more for delivery. Or, you know, there's a river and a bridge and, you know, we have to pay a a toll every time we cross the bridge. I'm going to split this county into two entities. And then you can set separate pricing for one county. Otherwise, it's by county. In California, the pricing is the same for that entire county for everybody. You can't sell it at a different Uh price to different people. Some states you can. You can decide what you It's what free you market charge. all yeah. the way. Huh? It's whatever. Whatever deal you want to cut that day. Whereas in California, you set a price, you post it, and then... At the um, post office? Uh, you submit it. There's one person that works for the state of California that handles all the pricing for all the breweries. Huh. Every once in a while, she sends out an email saying that she's going to be on vacation or something. <laughs> and the the list is like every brewery contact in California. Wow. Um so uh but you get this uh so it's price posting and, and they you know the, the the lady at the state actually does a really nice job. She's really efficient and I think uh you know does an amazing amount of work for one person. She also approves like labels. Oh. So all the labels and the price posting all go through this one person. Probably does 10 other things as well. I just don't know about. Um, but you submit this and there's – up until just recently, it was all by fax or you could mail it in. Oh. So you'd fill out this form and fax it or mail it in. Mm-hmm. And then you don't really know – you know, like the fax, you don't really know that it went through or not. Yeah. But they get this sheet of paper and then they put it in your folder. And then – it's public records, so if anybody wants to look at their pricing, they can. Okay. And you have to make an appointment with the state, and you go in, they pull out the folder, and they let you look through it to see what somebody's pricing is. But it's public record. Now they've got a thing where you can email in the forms, mm-hmm. which is a little bit easier. But uh, so on those forms, it's, you know, the format of the product, you know, how much you're going to charge the distributor or, the, you know, to wholesale distributors are considered wholesale okay so you're you're selling to wholesale or a a bar or a bottle shop or something like that those are considered retail you're selling to retail you're not retailing the beer right selling to retail or you're selling to wholesale and then there's the consumer pricing which we don't post and that i believe is quite flexible you can charge whatever you want you don't have to post pricing for consumers well, Just okay, to no, retail and to wholesale. Um, how do they define that then? I mean, is that, uh, would that be like selling out of your tasting room, do you mean? Right. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. And tasting room or a brew pub or something like that. Okay. Got so it. you don't have to post that pricing. But if you're selling to wholesale or to retail, um, those people you have to post pricing for. And you break it down into, you know, the format and the deposits and whether it's delivered or whether they pick it up and all this stuff. And then it's this sheet. You have a sheet per product. And then every time you want to change pricing, you submit a new sheet indicating what you're changing. And a price change takes 10 days to get in, take, go into effect. A new pricing for a new product, it takes effect immediately. But if you're trying to change the pro- price to, uh, you know, it takes 10 days. Wow. Okay. There's a waiting period. Um, it, it, there's an exception if you're trying to compete with somebody else's pricing in a given area. Then you have to <laughs> list what the area is and who who that one person is, what the product is you're competing against and what their pricing is and all that. If you're trying to match pricing or something, yeah, like that. I, can, I can see that. And their and their reasoning is they're trying to create an orderly and fair marketplace for everybody. 
But again, that's by county. So you can charge a different price in one county versus another. If it's further away from you and you're going to, you know, a delivered price, you can charge more, uh, you know, down to Los Angeles. If I got to drive down to Los Angeles from, you know, San Francisco, Mm -hmm. I got fuel costs, I got labor costs, you know, uh, I should be able to recover that one way or another. But uh, so there's, you know, uh, something that can be done that way. So that's in California. And because you have to do this, and it's not that easy to, you know, change your pricing, you have to go through these forms. Every time we want to change pricing, I got like, you know, there's like 40 counties in California. Yeah. You got to, you know, you got to make up all these sheets and you got to change them all and then you got to send them all in. And it's, um, you know, it's not quick and easy. It did, you know, it's a fair amount of work to change yeah. pricing. So well, I wonder if it's like that in Michigan because like, Michigan has like 140 counties. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, every <laughs> county is like five by five miles or something like that. Yeah, and, and what I'd like to do is just say all these counties are the same. You know, because, you know, in, in a cer- certain yeah. area, there's like, you know, 10 counties here in the Bay Area. It's like, well, yeah, they're all the same. I, I charge the same to all of them here. Mm-hmm. They're all the same, but you have to file each one individually yeah. per county. Uh. So that's, you know, that's the the rules here. And again, I've heard different states have different kinds of rules. Sure. And I'm not, I don't know if you've ever heard of anything. Uh, I've never had a look into it, no. Yeah. So uh, I, I know some places you don't have to post anything. I know some places, I wouldn't be surprised if there were places where, you know, you had to have like a higher alcohol beer be a higher price or something. I wouldn't, oh, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if that was the case. You know, there's all sorts of weird rules in sure. different places, like, you know, even on naming beers, like in Texas, mm. you know, anything that's over a certain percentage has to be called like a Bach or whatever it is, or yeah. an ale or whatever their rule is. I can't remember. So, um, that's what, uh, one of the, uh, things in California. All right, uh, and then pricing. Yeah, so different, and so you'd have a different price for each package that you do for the same beer, right? Right. So yeah, you're, you know, you can have um, like like at Heretic we do bombers, hmm. and which we sell by the case to wholesalers and retailers. Okay. And then um, that has one price, and it has a different price to the wholesaler than to the retailer. Okay. And then um, there's the California CRV, the bottle deposit. Right. <laughs> put that on there. And then um, we do sixth barrel and we do 50 liter. And so those have, you know, different pricing. And again, different to wholesaler and retailer. And the markup between those two is the difference that we would charge. But it doesn't necessarily mean that's what the wholesaler is going to charge the retailer. So if I sell to a distributor... Oh. They're under no real control of mine to say, well, this is what the pricing is. Okay. I can't control their retail pricing. That's interesting. Okay, and I, I've heard other people mention that, I guess, in, in regards to which distributor they go with, you know, someone will mark up their beer mm-hmm. you know, as a, at a higher price in, the, right. in a local market and versus other craft brews or something. And mm-hmm. I can see where that'd be a concern for you. Right. You know, it's like, hey, how's my beer being positioned well, in this market? We did have, you know, one of our distributors charge far more for our product than we had been charging. Yeah. And far more than all the other distributors around them are charging. The other distributors are got with the program and they're charging about what we were charging before. I think, you know, it went up like a dollar or down a dollar. It just depended. Sure. And some some distributors, what they want is what they call line pricing, where here's all these other IPAs. They're all selling for the same price. We would like you to be at that same price. Mm -hmm. You know, so in one case, they're like, you know, you're actually a few dollars lower. Do you mind, you know, if we raise that price up a few dollars? And they're like, you know, charge us a few dollars more and, Mm -hmm. you know, it'll be the same price as everybody else's. I'm like, all right, yeah, that's fine. Um, sometimes they'll like, you know, everybody's a little lower. Would you mind lowering your price a couple of dollars so we can meet that same line price for that, that type of product? Sure. Yeah. 
So I, I find that real interesting. And that's, you know, that's a, a good distributor that's saying, look, here's what everything else is selling for. We yeah. want you in the same price range. So yeah, you're, you're close. Yeah. You know, we can, we can, you know, let's not, let's not, uh, sell based on price. Let's sell based on this is a great beer. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's the same price as all the others. Uh, but this is a great beer, you know, enjoy. And then the salespeople have an easier time going, yeah, IPA, it's 155 for a, you know, a half barrel or whatever it might be. Yeah. Do you want brand A, brand B, brand C? Right. Yeah, right. Kind of thing. And then, you know, yeah, then you're selling based on flavor versus, you know, um, selling based on price points. Yeah. There are still competitors in the market that are, you know, trying to force the price point down and, you know, uh, really get as low a price as they can and compete on the volume aspect of it. And uh-huh. there's others that they look at it like, you know, this is what it costs us. If we were to sell this, you know, we could sell this keg beer in bottles and, you know, here's what we'd make and here's here's your price and the price is really high. Wow. But they still sell, sell well. So um, if they... And if they charge more, do they necessarily pass more profit back to you, or mm-hmm. no? You because your price is set by the state. Exactly. Well, we set our ah, price. You could right. you could set your price at any. You could sell a, a half barrel keg for a dollar if you wanted. Yeah, I suppose. There's no there's no restriction against that. Okay. You'd go out of business awfully fast. But I guarantee you, nobody would be selling it for you know two dollars and making a hundred percent profit. They would still sell it for like a hundred and fifty something, yeah. and it's like yeah, yeah, that's your problem. Yeah, yeah, you didn't charge enough, and um, you know that's one of the things is they say, you know, in, as far as pricing goes, if you don't, um, you know, claim the profit that's there, someone else in the chain will. Uh, so you know, we see our bottled products. We set a target, you know, we used industry standard markup percentages to say, okay, the Evil Twin, the Grave, the Grammary, um, and all those should sell for five ninety nine a bottle mm-hmm. at the, you know, in the store. And then the Cousin should be six forty nine. And we gave the, we figured, okay, well, retailers can make it six ninety nine. They make a little bit more off of that, or they could go be aggressive and go five ninety nine on all of them. Yeah up to them and i only see a few stores that do that i see others that are like several dollars more per bottle oh really because they can you know they can get it yeah now you know the same thing can be said of distributors so you can set whatever price you want to the wholesaler and then that wholesaler can set whatever price they want to the retailer and that retailer can set whatever price they want to the consumer Mm-hmm. So sometimes you'll get people going, well, you know, your beer's way too expensive. And you're like, it is? They're like, yeah, it's like, you know, nine ninety nine for for a bomber. And it's like, well, <laughs> you know, I, I, I can't, you know, <laughs> what do you say? You can't yeah. really say, well, go over here, it's cheaper. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't do that. You're, you're prevented by law from talking about specific retailers and their pricing and, and all that you can't say, oh, yeah, this here's a great place that we just sold to, uh, you know, in in Davis or something, and it's it's you know got great pricing. I can't say that sort of thing. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, you know, it's up to the consumer to find that, and it's up to the retailer to, you know, set pricing well enough that they're that they're maximizing their profits. They need to stay in business. Yeah, yeah. And but not so high that they're you know alienating customers. Right, right. So, uh, kind of interesting there. It is, yeah. It's uh, that's kind of like um, that's kind of like Amazon with you know their discounts that they mm-hmm. impose on you know their wholesalers. Right, right. Yeah. Um, hmm. Interesting. So, um, going back to Tommy's uh, email, I mean, um, mm-hmm. so he's trying to sell kegs, is it? Uh, right. Price kegs. Price is kegs. And when I priced our kegs, the first thing I did was go around to a lot of the local bars and places and ask uh-huh. them for the sales sheet for the distributors <laughs> that deal with them. Yeah. And so I, I was able to get, you know, half a dozen right off the bat. And they're like, oh, yeah, here, take the whole stack. You know, we'll, we'll get <laughs> new ones, no problem. 
And so I had a price listing from all the distributors they deal with, and it showed you know all the various brands. So I could look at uh, you know uh, Stone. I could look at Anderson Valley. I'm just pointing out the brands I see around here. Yeah. Uh, Anderson Valley. I could look at uh, uh, you know Firestone, uh, Sierra Nevada, Lagunitas, Green Flash, Drakes, everybody. Right. And you know those are those are you know the kinds of companies that I think we're in the marketplace with. Right. Your peers. And yeah, um, you know I'm not I'm not really concerned what somebody sells a keg of uh, you know Bud or Coors or something Shock like that. Or, yeah. Yeah. I mean those are fine products, but they're um, you know a different marketplace than what we're we're looking for. Right. So we're looking at you know the more premium craft market, and also there's you know the high end you know you know uh premium craft i think where you know the prices are high and there's imports things like that right and what i would do is look at um the all the various products that i thought we were you know kind of in line with if we had um uh the evil twin i thought okay you know kind of west coast red how about uh, you know the pizza port uh shark bite, uh, shark bite uh bear republic's red rocket uh right. stones arrogant bastard um uh ballast point calico amber right. you know i was trying to look at beers that were sort of you know in the general vicinity of you know a similar kind of beer and then i looked at what they were charging per keg and then you know i made myself a spreadsheet because sometimes the, the format sizes are different maybe oh. they're dealing in half barrel we do 50 liter 13.2 right. gallon right or you know uh and then sixth barrels and so i made a spreadsheet to convert from one format to the other <laughs> so if somebody had one pricing i could see if we did equivalent number of ounces um you know what would the price be so mm-hmm. uh, you know i could go into a retailer and say here's what you know our price is and if they said, oh, that's for half barrel, and I said, no, that's 50 liter, you know, the half barrel price would be, you know, equivalent would be this. Yeah. You know, so you could be nice and upfront and honest with them. And then also what I did was uh, on that spreadsheet, I took uh, a lot of times what retailers like to hear is what's the cost per pour. Right. Interesting. So I would calculate what, what would it cost to pour a 20 ounce pint, a 16 ounce pint. Uh, you know, and I did other common forms like eight ounce, ten ounce. You yeah. Know. So on a higher alcohol beer, you can say, well, you know, eight ounce pour is you know sixty seven cents or something or mm-hmm. uh, whatever it be. And a lot of retailers are looking for you know around a dollar a pint. So you can get to like a dollar ten, dollar thirteen, something like that. It's still okay. You know, it just depends. But if you're you know, like at the two dollar a pint, right, yeah. it needs to be something super premium that you can charge twice as much for. Right, right. Um. So if you can, you know, if your if your pricing is kind of around that, uh, you know, dollar to you know dollar ten per pint on some on a on a beer that's uh, you know a fairly premium beer, that's a pretty good you know price point. Right, and so. I compared, you know, other products and, you know, looked at my price. If my pricing was, you know, the same as those per ounce, Mm -hmm. you know, what's the per per pour cost? Right. And I'd figure the per pour cost for those other brands, too. Sure. And then um, I'd look at that number versus all my cost of goods, right? So what did it cost me to produce those? that that keg or the you know that 16 ounces whatever it might be you know how much was i making right uh on that that sale and and you know if, if you're not making a profit then you need to raise the price yeah if you're not so. making a good enough profit to kind of cover you know everything else and yeah then you know you need you need to change the price yeah i mean if you're using 12 malts in a beer and Right. Realize that you're you're not able to make any more money off that beer than one that you mm-hmm. only used two malt in, and you know had a much lower cost per uh, per materials, co- lo- much lower materials mm-hmm. cost for you. Well, and the funny thing is, malt isn't isn't really a big deal in beers. Probably not. It's it's hops. Yeah, uh, hops, of course. Hops are the yeah. killer. And uh, actually, I'll, I'll tell you a secret about uh, uh, about uh, our evil twin uh, when we come back from break. So let's do that. Let's take a uh, a short break, 
And uh, when we come back, we'll get into more about pricing, and uh, I'll tell you a, a secret about our evil twin. Back after this. Cool. Hi, I'm Jamel Zanishef, and in addition to my work on the Brewing Network, I write the style profile column in every issue of Brew Your Own magazine. Hi, I'm Sean Paxton, and when I'm not prepping for the home brewed chef on the Brewing Network, you can find me writing articles on how to cook with your home brew for Brew Your Own magazine. Greetings, cretins. This is John Palmer, and when I'm not writing for Brew Your Own, I'm reading it. John Palmer, Sean Paxton, Jamil Zanishev. If you love listening to them on the Brewing Network, you'll love reading their articles, tips, and recipes in the pages of Brew Your Own magazine. Join Jamil, John, and Sean eight times a year in Brew Your Own. And when you subscribe to BYO on the Brewing Network website, half of your subscription price goes right back to the BN to support great beer and food programming. So sign up for Brew Your Own magazine through the BN website today so you can listen and read Read your way to better homebrew. When Michael Fairbrother started Moonlighting, he had no idea how quickly his dream was going to grow. Having homebrewed for 15 years, Michael decided to go pro, but not with beer. While attending his homebrew club meetings, he saw ladies knocking their men out of the way to try his mead. Moonlight Meadery is now two years old and can produce 200,000 bottles a year. It's the first New Hampshire winery to ever distribute to California and Australia. In fact, you can find... Find Moonlight Meadery Meads in Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maine, Rhode Island, Vermont, and New Hampshire. And they ship direct to 17 states. They produce 56 different varieties of mead and are unlike anything you've ever seen on the market. Michael Fairbrother at Moonlight Meadery is a real success story that can make the BN Army proud. Visit Moonlight Meadery in Londonderry, New Hampshire or online at MoonlightMeadery.com. Hi, I'm Jason Harris, the proud owner here at Keystone Homebrew Supply. We're thrilled to be entering our 20th year of supplying this great industry. And to show you, the Brewing Network Army, how much we appreciate your support, we're offering you 10% off your first order on our website, keystonehomebrew.com. Just use coupon code BNARMY at checkout, and I'll get your order out the same day. My goal at Keystone Homebrew Supply has always been to have a complete supply of everything a brewer could want. When you place your order online or when you come into our store, it's our goal to have everything on your list and more. One aspect of KeystoneHomebrew.com that we're really excited about is the ability to fulfill customers' exact grain bills. Do you hate to wait? Keystone Homebrew Supply can get your precious yeast and hops to you within just one day if you live between Connecticut and Virginia and within two days east of the Mississippi. KeystoneHomebrew.com I'm Jason Harris and I approve this message. What does craft beer mean to you? Is it a delicious way to support your town's local brewer? Or perhaps it's the perfect beverage to pair with those delicious meals at your favorite restaurant and at home. Regardless of whether you're thinking of pints or pairings, pilsners or porters, craftbeer.com is the site where craft beer lovers come together to learn and share. Craftbeer.com is brought to you by the Brewers Association and celebrates the best of American craft beer and its brewers. Craftbeer.com is the best place to find craft beer events recipes, great feature stories, the most up-to-date brewery listings, and resources for your next beer tasting or dinner, like style guidelines, pairing mats, and charts. Get the inside scoop on new beer releases and special events from today's craft beer insiders and chime in to share your own knowledge, perfect pairings, road trips, recipes, and more. Craftbeer.com, celebrating the best of American beer. Are you a hophead? Beer lovers of all stripes will love Brewers Publications' latest release, IPA, Brewing Techniques, Recipes, and the Evolution of India Pale Ale by Mitch Steele. I wanted to write a book that presented an accurate review of the history of IPA and also provided current technical brewing tips and recipe information. India Pale Ale is a style I love because it has a rich, fascinating history, and today it provides brewers a showcase for all the great new hop varieties that are available. I'm so proud of this book, and I know you'll enjoy all the recipes and thoughts 
thoughts from so many of the world's great IPA brewers. IPA is available now from Brewers Publications at brewerspublications.com and your favorite homebrew store. Order your copy today and take your hot forward beers to the next level. American Homebrewers Association and Brewers Association members receive early notice and special discounts to most Brewers Publication releases. Visit brewerspublications.com to learn more and to find a schedule of author appearances. IPA by Mitch Steele. Get yours today. Williams Brewing is your online resource for prompt delivery of quality home brewing supplies. Since 1979, Williams Brewing has offered the finest equipment and freshest ingredients and the best customer service in the business. Cut hours off your brewing sessions by using one of our 11 varieties of famous Williams malt extract. Our Williams Belgian Pale Extract is mashed with pure Belgian two-row malt and a small percentage of Belgian wheat malt for an authentic Belgian character you just can't get from other extracts. Or check out our unique fermenters, two-and-a-half-gallon kegs, paintball tank-based draft beer equipment, bottling aids, and much more. We even have our own line of precision hydrometers. Go to williamsbrewing.com to browse our vast selection. That's williamsbrewing.com. Orders placed by 3.30 p.m. Pacific time ship the same day. Brewing is easy. The Williams way. Back to your hosts. Jamil Zanashev and John Palmer, putting the testicles in technical. This is Brew Strong. Not associated with doping in any way. <laughs> dopes. Yeah, associated <laughs> with dopes, that's for sure. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, speaking of dopes. JP, how are you feeling? Great. Cool. Um, no, speaking of uh, having fun and a good time, like we, we do when we do this show, check out our great sponsor, Adam and Eve. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know if you've, you've been on the site there, John. N- not lately. <laughs> Look on <laughs> <in> your face. <laughs> uh- <laughs> Why are you rapidly going through? Will the wife listen to this? Or, uh, Soap on a rope. Uh, let's see, uh, yeah. um, uh, no, go check out adamandeve.com. Uh, a great site, like 18,000 different, uh, over 18,000 different items at the site. So everything you need for your adult needs. If, you, if you're if you looking for a new adult toy, uh, <clears throat> some lube, uh, DVDs, you know, uh, they got it. They got okay. a huge selection. Do they have uh, any of the singing bass? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> they might have a singing ass. Ah. You, you know, that could be, you know. You, well, no, I won't go into that. Um, uh, but for a uh, limited time only, you can go to adamandeve.com, and you can order just about any one item, and you're going to get 50% off of that item. So you buy one, one item, 50% off. Okay. Follow me here. Along with that, if you use the offer code, uh, well, if you use the offer code Jamel, J-A-M-I-L, you get the, the one item 50% off. Then you get three free adult DVDs. And you get to, it's not just like, oh, here's the, uh, you know, the bargain crap that wouldn't sell. And, you know, you're getting the uh, the goat lover special. Wait, Instead, if you put Jamil in the offer code, I mean, am I going to get three DVDs that you're, that, you know, that are you're, yours? Of my choosing, yeah. yes. Yeah, okay. And I'm going to choose from genres such as uh, anal, amateur, Asian, big breasts, big butts, bisexual, chunky, co-eds, fetish, gay, interactive, POV, lesbian, MILFs, etc. Yeah, Jamil does Dallas. And Jamil. <laughs> just does, does Debbie, does Dallas, yes. Um, uh, so, you know, you actually get to choose from quite a large array of uh, DVDs. Uh, so you get three free DVDs. You get the one item 50% off by using the off code Jamel, J-A-M-I-L. Uh, one item 50% off. You get three free DVDs. You're going to get free shipping on the whole thing and a free uh, mystery gift. Wow. That's so uh, that's pretty cool. And uh, you can even do it from your mobile phone. You go to uh, Adam adamandeve.com and uh, uh, shop from there as well. So uh, pretty great. Uh, they've been a longtime sponsor, and apparently you guys buy lots of uh, lube and dildos and things like that. And that uh, helps keep them as a sponsor. So go to adamandeve.com, buy that one item 50% off, get all that other stuff for free. I mean, it's one Sounds item good. half price. Yeah. <laughs> you really can't beat it. It's a great offer. 
and uh, use the offer code Jamil, J-A-M-I-L. All right, so uh, speaking of things like 50% off, you really can't do that on, on the beer. I mean, you could at retail, but you can't do it on your wholesale and your and your price to retailers. And we were talking about how I determine prices, uh, and uh, we were talking about costs and things like that. And you brought up the cost of malts, and, and uh, I was going to say, oh, here's one of the secrets about Evil Twin. That's probably, other than the barrel-aged beers, which sure. and sours and things like that that just are ridiculous, probably one of our most expensive beers to make is Evil Twin. Sure. And it's one of our cheapest beers into the wholesaler. Really? Yeah. You know, so, uh, you know, it's it's the same price <clears throat> for our base uh, beers, you know, in the bottle, in the in the keg. Was Evil that Twin your strategy is, or did it just work out that way? Uh, you know, it was one of our first beers. So it was one of the first ones that had a set pricing on. And, you know, uh, lucky for me, Brindleson told me, he's like, you know, figure out what your costs are and then add 15%. Uh-huh. Price your beer like that because, you know, or, you know, or yeah, you figure out what your costs are, add fifteen percent to that, and then you know, then set your price off that right. You know, cost. you know that uh, you know it's going to cost you more than you anticipate. And he was one hundred percent right, like everything with that guy. Sure. Um, and so uh, you know, I I set it there. And a lot of people are like, oh, you know, that seems kind of pricey. But I based it off of the other beers in the marketplace. So yeah. I wasn't, you know, as a smaller producer, I can't produce beer at the same cost as uh, you know, a larger producer like Lagunitas can do. Right. You know, they got right. much much more volume. They got, you know, economy of scale. So I have to, you know, set my pricing, you know, as aggressively as I can. But, you know, still I got to make a profit. But the thing is, we use so much citra hops in that thing. Yeah. And are citra expensive. hops are expensive. Yeah. And it's one of the most expensive hops we can get. And we use an, like a boatload of citra in that thing. <laughs> and because of that, the cost of making that beer is ridiculous. One is we lose a lot of beer because of the massive dry hopping. Yeah. Okay. You know, it all gets bound up in, in that material. We don't have a centrifuge or anything to e- extract it back out. Yeah. So we have to dump all that along with the dry hops, and then the cost of the dry hops. So uh, it's one of our most expensive beers to make, but it's our lowest-priced beer to the wholesaler. Wow. But do, do you produce more of it? It kind of makes up for it? Um, yeah. It, it's but, you know, kind guess, of our flagship. Yeah. But as you say, I mean, it costs you more per batch. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> really but, it doesn't help you there. You know, I don't know that we wouldn't sell the same amount if the price was 10 bucks more a keg. Sure. Okay. Because you also need to take into account um, all the, you know, what kind of accounts you're going to. Mm-hmm. If you're just starting out and, you know, you're limited production and you're going to be selling to craft beer bars and, sure. you know, craft beer bottle shops and that's your market, mm-hmm. you can set it at a, you know, a higher price because, while they'll mark it up as well, the um, you know the marketplace when they see new beers from a new brewery, that people want to try them. They're willing right. to pay whatever it takes. Right. See, and the interesting thing, I was thinking, I was trying to set our pricing based on established breweries. Okay. And yeah. what and what pricing I would set for that, you know, to be kind of in the same ballpark as them. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and not it, it was okay to be a few dollars more. I figured. But just not so people would go, oh, my God, that's ridiculous. You're so much higher than everybody else. I yeah. wanted to kind of be close to them. So within like five bucks on a, on a keg, right? Yeah. But the reality is I think the retailers realized it, that they could charge more because we're a new brewery. And so they went ahead and, and yeah. took advantage of that sometimes. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I could have charged more to start. And so, anyways, Evil Twin was one of our first beers, so I had that pricing in mind. Then we, when we started coming out with other brands, I, I was like, well, you know, I can't sell everything like I'm selling the Evil Twin for because, you know, we won't, be, we won't be profitable. We won't be able right. to stay in business because we're, we're making very little off of that. And we need massive volumes in order to really make it all work as a business model. So I'm going to go ahead and charge it, you know, a few bucks more, ten bucks more, and then we also had the big uh, malt 
uh, price increase. Malt, price of malt went up 30%. Now, Just this year? This year? Uh, yeah, at the beginning of the year. Okay. Um, so, you know, our price was going up on malt. But, again, malt isn't a, a huge part of the price of the, the beer. Mm-hmm. But it did affect, you know, our costs by a certain percentage. Sure. Not 30, it didn't go up 30%. But, you know, if, of what component of the cost malt was, sure. that component went up 30%. Yeah, which added a, a you know a percentage or two into the cost of the beer. Right. Well, the great thing was everybody was raising their prices <laughs> because oh, yeah, of it. Yeah, because of that. So I called every customer and said, you know, we're going to have to raise our price because you know price of malt went up. And I, every every last one of them said, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's raising the price. Don't worry about it. Cool. And I asked a few, you know, it's like, do you want to know what the price is? And they're like, yeah. Sure. Yeah, what's the new price? <laughs> and they don't really care. They're just like, well, you know, it's still going to be, you know, within that range. I don't think that, you know, they're that concerned about it. Mm-hmm. And I do see there are, you know, double IPAs and IPAs on the market that are selling for, you know, $250 went to the retailer. Wow. To the bars. They're paying $250 for a half barrel keg. Wow. Okay. So, you know, pretty pricey. Yeah. Whereas the average one is more around 160. Yeah. Yeah. But they those still sell. Yeah, you know, cuz they have such a following. And, yeah. and it's and it's not just uh, you know, people are thinking it's like Pliny or something, but no, it's not. Um there are other other brands out there that uh, command that same kind of uh, respect and pricing and and speaking to the brewers, they were saying, you know, well, you know, that's pretty much what it costs us. If we were to, you know, it, that's one of the things about draft pricing. It's, I think, artificially suppressed. Oh, okay. Because you can, you can get a keg of, like, Bud Miller Coors real cheap. Not that you're pricing the same, but it's, you know, it's dirt cheap. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's always been that mentality that you do draft just to support your bottle sales. Bottles are where you make your money, your, your bottles and cans in the, okay. in the grocery stores and stuff. That's where you make most of your profit. And the draft is just like advertising. Hmm. You get people to try it at a local bar, and that gets them to buy it, you know, in bottles later on. Really? I would, I would think that, I would think even for established breweries that uh, draft sales would be the bulk of their production. Hmm. A lot of times it is, but you don't want it to be. <clears throat> okay. Because you, you make less off of that. Yeah. But, you know, talking to a lot of these breweries that are able to command these higher prices on their kegs, mm-hmm. um, you know, talking to them, they're like, well, you know, if we were to, you know, take the same sort of profit margin on our keg beer as we do on our bottled beer, um, you know, that's the pricing. Uh and I tell you, if you can do that, I think it's excellent. And 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 maybe the market will become more and more open to that. Sure. I was talking to Dave Logson. Uh, he did uh, Logson's farmhouse sales. Or yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and he was saying, I mean, they only do very limited draft. Um, you know, almost everything's in bottles. Right. But he was saying that he has, you know, a lot of people just begging for it, and so. I think he said that uh yeah he wasn't charging less than I think 3 or 350 uh wow. uh a keg <laughs> <laughs> for a half barrel keg or something like that. Yeah. You know, t- t- you know, considerable pricing. I could see that on a sour or something like that. Yeah, but something uh, barrel age that needs a long time. Long, yeah. Long inventory. Yeah. But uh I found that pretty fascinating. And, uh, you know, that, that those were the kinds of prices people were, were able to command. And again, I think, you know, you need to kind of be there in the marketplace. I think it's easier to, you know, and I've heard, I've heard the opposite from people. Some people say it's easier to lower your price later than it is to raise your price. Some people say it's easier Mm. to raise your price. You get in there, you want to get in the door and then you can raise your price. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think if you, you know, it, it anytime, probably depends on the quality of your beer, right? You know, anytime somebody gives me an excessively high price, I think they're trying to take advantage of me, right? Anytime, and even if they come back with a lower price later, 
Mm-hmm. It's, it's like when we were looking for buildings for the new brewery. Yeah. You know, one place they came out with a low price right from the beginning. That's where we ended up. Other p- places were lowering their prices, you know, once they found out. Yeah. You know, they started out with these really high prices, and then they came down. And then, you know, they would match it. And then I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going to go with the guy that told me from day one what his best price was. Mm-hmm. And then these other places came even lower. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm still going to stick with the guy that, you know, seemed real honest and upfront from day one. Here's what we can do for you. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I like that. That's yeah. the kind of person I want to deal with. So I kind of feel the same way in, in pricing on anything. And if somebody's way too aggressive in pricing, yeah, you got to think, well, what's wrong? Right. You right. know? why is this so cheap and it, it kind of cheapens the thing so i think it's uh you know it behooves you to kind of try and be in a, in the market with everything else and that's how you you find out how everyone else is like i said you go and get those um sheets from your friendly retailers or you can ask the uh, distributors to give you the pricing okay uh, they may or may not um and then you know for uh, tommy he's in uh California, you know, it's public record, but you have to go in person. Oh, okay. So it's probably probably to not Sacramento. handy for him. To Sacramento, yeah. yeah. But uh, let's do this. Let's take our, our third and final break, and then we'll come back and we'll wrap up with a, a few more thoughts on pricing after this. BN Army Hop Tech has a great discount waiting for you. Do you often find it difficult to find specific specialty ingredients for your home brew recipes? Well, listen to this. Hop Tech stocks 59 different grains to choose from, 39 varieties of pellet hops, and 8 kinds of whole leaf hops. And Hop Tech not only carries Y yeast and White Labs yeast for you, but also Fermentus 04, 5, 6, 23, 33, and T58 Belgian yeast, plus Cooper's Nottingham and Windsor yeasts. Got your recipe ready to go? Pick up some great brew gear like new long and short sleeve shirts, games, and more. HopTech's new website is being updated every day with new items. If you don't see it, call the shop. They're open six days a week. BN Army and AHA members get a 10% discount, and active military personnel get 15% off. Visit HopTech.com today for great selection, great service, and a great discount. HopTech.com. That's it. I've had it. I am never putting hops in my beer again. What? Why? It's just too ridiculous. Insane prices, stupid contracts, high shipping costs, crappy selection. Dude, you need Nico Brew. Nico Brew will rock your f***ing face right the f*** off your f***ing skull. $5 shipping to all 50 states, plus fantastic international rates get you low prices on Nico Brew's great selection of hops and more. Whether you're a home brewer, a pro brewer, or a home brew shop owner, Nico Brew can get you the hops you need in increments big and small, single orders, spot buys, or full contracts. And there's only one place to join the uber special secret elite bare bones club where you'll get the best deals anywhere. Holy f***ing shit! NicoBrew.com N-I-K-O-B-R-E-W Nico Brew, your bare bones buddy in the brewing business. Tonight is the night. We bring the creature to life, Dr. Blitzenstein? Yes, J.P. Gore. Everything is perfect for my next fermented creation. My daughter, the storm is too far away. We'll never have enough power to isomerize the creature's alpha acid. <laughs> yes, J.P. Gore. We will. For I have in my possession the Tower of Power. Glickman's new Tower of Power is the evolution of automation. Control hot liquor, sparge, and mash temps like a pro. The Tower of Power is a high-quality gas-fired rim system that works with your current brewing setup. With ultra-precision, the tower can hold your mash to one-half of a degree Fahrenheit. Precision and repeatability. The Tower of Power is the answer to automatic, fast ramp times. See more at BlickmanEngineering.com. Bring your next creation to life with the Tower of Power. Dr. Glickman's with the Tower of Power, you can probably give me an afternoon at the pub to Enjoy it, right? Don't be silly, J.P. Gore. We have beer to brew. When I order a beer, I want my server to know more about it than I do. I want someone who enjoys good beer and loves helping others enjoy it, too. 
I want someone who knows how to pour a perfect pint for any beer style. I want a Cicerone. The Cicerone Certification Program is creating the type of people who help you enjoy great beer. Home brewers and craft beer lovers know beer is more flavorful and complex than ever, and it takes some serious knowledge to store and serve beer right. Cicerone's No Beer. There are three levels in the Cicerone Program. Certified Beer Server, Certified Cicerone, and Master Cicerone. Cicerones are truly the sommeliers of beer. The best beer locations have a certified Cicerone on staff. Relaxed and unpretentious. Cicerones are tested on storing and serving beer, beer styles, flavor and tasting, the brewing process and ingredients, and pairing food with beer. Learn more about your next beer guide at Cicerone.org. Certified Cicerone, because it takes top talent to present a perfect pint. All right, BN Army, it's trivia time. What's the only homebrew shop with over 1,000 recipe kits, $4.99 shipping on orders over 100 bucks, and is also home of the Wolf Shirt? The one and only answer is awesome. Austin Homebrew Supply. For over 20 years, they've specialized in creating recipes such as the best-selling Texas Blonde Ale, Apocalypso, Hot Bomb 2.0, and Double Chocolate Stout. And they just recently unveiled their small grain kits that produce one gallon of beer. Visit AustinHomebrew.com to browse their extensive catalog of equipment and ingredients. They also have many clone recipes of your favorite commercial beers. They're the exclusive retailer of Brew Vent Yeast Fuel as well, Yeast Nutrient, and the all-new bodybuilder follow austin homebrew supply on google plus to participate in video hangouts on popular brewing topics so visit austinhomebrew.com today and make sure you sign up for their weekly email with news and specials austin homebrew supply austinhomebrew.com a vial of white labs yeast is the key to your best beer When you open a vial of White Labs yeast, you're giving your beer its best chance for a perfect fermentation. In addition to their already incredible variety of yeast, White Labs is proud to announce WLP 90, San Diego's Super Yeast, now available year-round. WLP 90 is super clean, super fast fermenting, with low esters and has a neutral flavor and aroma profile. It's alcohol tolerant and highly flocculent. For more of the latest White Labs news, click over to whitelabs.com, where you can read reviews of yeast, learn in the lab section, and join the customer club. And if you should find yourself in San Diego, White Labs has a brand new training facility for craft brewers and home brewers alike. Whitelabs.com. Discover yeast, nutrients, enzymes, and more for commercial breweries, home brewers, and homebrew stores. White Labs. It's all in the vial. To the beer guys that make other beer guys look like wine guys. Brew strong. All right, we're back. We were talking about uh, you know pricing in, in the marketplace, and uh, particularly Tommy was asking about draft and how you set that pricing, and um, you know what kind of thought went into it. And uh, I guess uh, we kind of wrapped it up. I, I don't suppose there's any questions from the chat there, JP. Uh, there was one from Eagle Dude, and he said, Can Jay-Z provide some ballpark numbers for a percentage markup at each of the distribution stages, i.e. brewer to distributor, distributor uh, to retailer, uh, brewer to retailer? Yes, yes, very good. Um, generally, what the distributors are looking for when, when you go to the distributors uh, for for draft product, they're looking in the thirty to thirty one, thirty two percent range for draft, uh, and then in the um, bottle market, the package market for bombers and six packs and things like that, um, they're looking about twenty five percent on those. The and the reason being why that's less is because they just drop off the the product. They don't really have to do a lot with it. With draft, they have to uh, a lot of times repair. In different states, it's going to be different because state certain states have rules about who can mess with the draft equipment. In California, um, they can uh, clean and repair the draft lines and provide draft equipment. So. Uh, the extra margin goes to cover that a uh, draft tech tech to uh, make sure everything's pouring correctly and to keep everything clean. Um, 
and having to go back and pick up the empty kegs and stuff. The retailer is looking for mm, in the draft markets. Um, boy, they're looking for about you know five hundred percent or so on their you know uh, between four and six hundred percent on the draft product. Well, yeah. So they'll pay a dollar for a pint. They want to get um, five dollars, you know, five dollars, six dollars, seven dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and you know, a lot of people think that's ridiculous, but keep in mind, um, you know, there's waste when the beer's poured. Mm-hmm. There's um, you know overhead of the building, and a lot of times these places that you like to go because it has a beautiful view of the ocean. Yeah, they're paying a ridiculous amount for that that piece of property. So then they need the employees to be there all the time. Um, you know, there's a lot of expense in there, and you know, places that do it right and they're jam packed all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're making money, and yeah, that that owner's doing really well, making a nice tidy bundle. But you see places where it's not that busy, right? Those people are losing money. They can go under. You know, it's not. It's not a guarantee. It's not like you know, just because you get to mark up the beer that much that somehow you're you're rolling yeah. in dough. So right. Right. you know, everybody. You know, everyone thinks that the other person's taking too much, but it's really, you know, it's kind of a self correcting thing in in a lot of ways. And then on bottle product, the retailers are looking for. Um, somewhere around the 30% to 40%. It depends on the type of packaging. When it's something like six packs, Mm -hmm. uh, the percentage can be lower. It can be, you know, 26, 27, 28%. Uh, When it's bombers and things like that that they have to take out of the box and handle individually and they take up different shelf space and things like that, then they tend to want uh, a higher margin. Like 30. Yeah. Or craft or something like that. If they have mm-hmm. craft, that's you know, if if it's a a product that moves through real easy, they're happy to you know stock that and and, and sell by volume. Uh, they'll they're willing to take a lower percentage when it's you know product that may go bad on the shelf and they have to toss it. Um, you know, they're they're looking for a higher volume. So that's kind of the the ballpark pricing there. Good question. Mm-hmm. And again, that's going to vary state to state depending on. On what it is, but you should be able to talk to distributors if you're looking at working with distributors or retailers and ask them, you know, how much margin are you looking for? How much margin do you need? Right. And they should be able to tell you. If not, you know, uh, I think you're, you know, looking at the wrong distributor. Yeah. Right. Exactly. All right. Uh, Got one more. Oh, okay. From uh, per cap or whatever. Uh, with how much the price of beers have gone up, uh, he says they are paying in New Jersey around 12 bucks a bomber for an English brown sometimes. Do you really think this market can sustain this? Is it about to pop here in New Jersey? Uh, he says it's already about to pop in New Jersey without, uh, I guess they're running out of shelf space in some of the mm-hmm. liquor stores and stuff. So 12 bucks a bomber for an English brown? Well, it depends on what English brown it is. I mean, whether it's from England or, you know, a local brewery. I mean... But you I'm should a, see what beer it, prices are in Australia. It depends what the retailer is. Um, yeah, I see our beers there from fourteen to thirty one dollars a bottle. Yeah, and they've got really high taxes on beer. Right, nuts. high taxes, especially for higher alcohol beers, mm-hmm. and then shipping refrigerated all that way. Yeah, you know, it's you know, as it's a expense. local brewer. Yeah, um, you know, I, again, I think it's kind of self correcting if if people think it's. Uh, too high a price, then they won't buy it, mm-hmm. and then that brewer will go out of business, or you know, or the retailers won't carry it anymore because nobody's buying it, or you know, maybe they'll correct the price. Mm-hmm. Depends on on how it compares uh, locally. Uh, you know, different markets have different prices. I see people buying our product online by the case, and I know these aren't individuals <laughs> buying this. I'm sure it's stores somewhere on the east coast that are buying it. And putting it on the shelves, and they're buying it at retail, and then they're marking it up again. Wow! Yeah. Um, and I've seen that, you know, a number of places where they're where they're doing that, and because they're paying retail, uh, sometimes 
I've seen stores do it just to carry it, and mm-hmm. they essentially just recover their money back from it, so the mm-hmm. price isn't too ridiculous. But still, it, it sure adds up. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, whether it'll sustain this, I think... I was thinking about uh, the price of gas recently, and it's, you know, four bucks a gallon here in California. Mm-hmm. And... Four fifty. And I remember when it was... You know, seventy five cents. Mm-hmm. But that was a long time ago. It was seventy five cents. <laughs> and not only has you know uh, inflation taken its toll, people go, right. "Well, you know, inflation wouldn't make it four four dollars or four fifty a gallon or whatever." No, it wouldn't. But the car I'm driving gets nearly you know three to four times the gas mileage right. that the car I was driving back then, right. or the cars I could buy back then. So I, I started to calculate it out. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty much paying the same price for gas I was back when I was a kid, first learning to drive. Yeah. It really hasn't gone up that much. Right. So, you know, you think about it and you think, oh, my God, this is ridiculous. And I'm, I, and I, it does seem ridiculous in a way, but, um, you know, back a few years ago, I think the price was just really artificially low right. on gas. And yeah. now it's actually kind of, okay, well, it kind of makes sense. Um, but I, I did a. Or it doesn't really make sense. I think it's still a lot of speculators. But, um, uh, you know, I, can, I, 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 it's not as ridiculous as it seems. Is I guess what my realization was, and I think sure. the same thing on craft beer. I think what was happening before was the price was artificially suppressed because the very large brewers were able to sell beer so cheap into the marketplace, right. and you had to compete with that, and you had to try and gain market share with that and so you had to hold your price down as low as you possibly could in order to get into the door right now people are realizing hey you know this is actually good stuff there's more of a market for it and when you're using ingredients that are extremely expensive and you're using in massive quantities it's like well you know for me to make a living not to be you know uh you know uh rich and famous but just to make a living i gotta charge price that ends up being you know uh you know before bombers were always three bucks yeah you know two bucks you see two two dollar bombers dollar ninety nine mm-hmm. two ninety nine three ninety nine was an expensive one right just right. a few years back right now bombers are six bucks right you know yeah, and true. and there's plenty of bombers that are close to ten it's so interesting the the uh, brewers association has uh, some materials on their website for brewers Mm-hmm. And one of them is a is a presentation that kind of looks at the costs, the comparable costs of beer and right. and other commodities from like you know nineteen sixties to you know two thousand, I think it was five two thousand five I think hmm. with the two years that they benchmarked and looking at you know the price of dairy, the price of eggs mm-hmm. and, and a couple other commodities, gasoline, coffee, mm-hmm. um, the price of you know industrial beer has not really changed from 1960 to 2005. Right. It's it's still when you look at the G, you know the uh, the inflation and the in average take home pay and so on mm-hmm. and et cetera et cetera. Um, you know the price of a six pack is is pretty comparable right. to what it was then. Um, and you look at and the, you know the price of a of an industrial six pack today is yeah, six dollars for six pack eight dollars yeah, versus. Yeah. Um, you know the the cost of a tw- six pack of craft beer maybe twelve dollars for that six mm-hmm. pack, um, you know a, a mark up but not not outrageously yeah. so. Oh, the price of ingredients is just getting ridiculous, mm-hmm. but uh, you know that's because the price of fuel has gone up. Right, <laughs> the right. price of everything's gone up, and so yeah, it, yeah. it has a an effect. Uh, you know, and to answer the question, if it's sustainable, um, you know, I think. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's gonna it's gonna stick, you yeah. know. And I think there will be some players that get forced out of the market because they're trying to charge this high price. Their quality isn't very good. Mm-hmm. They're gonna go. Uh, other other people, they'll have the quality. They'll grow in volume. They'll be able to get some economy of scale. They'll be able to hold their price, hold the line on their price, and you know they'll do fine. So that's it. Any other questions? All right. So another fine show. I think if you're listening live, stay tuned. We're going to do another. Uh, we're, we're actually going to wrap up the whole program series. Then we're going to do a Q&A after that. 
uh, it's been a, a good series. I think a lot of great questions, yeah, a lot of a lot great of uh, information. <laughs> yeah, if if you uh, have questions specifically about going pro, send them into us. Uh, you can send them in, into us at the uh, Brewing Network, uh, Jamel at the Brewing Network, or uh, Bruce Strong at the Brewing Network dot com. Right. Question progasm. Yep. And if you're uh, looking for uh, uh, goodies to help support the Brewing Network, check out the Brewing Network store. They got hats, all the cool uh, lunch meat shirts. JP is rocking one of those. They got new Bruce Strong shirts. I really like the new Bruce Strong shirts. Yeah. It's a great logo. I'm wearing the classic old version, but yeah, they got too. the newer one is is a lot better. Uh, so check those out. Uh, buy those when you do. It supports the Brewery Network and uh, it keeps programming like this going. Same thing, you know. Visit our great sponsors, Blickman Engineering, BlickmanEngineering.com. Fantastic folks, fantastic equipment. If you're going to buy a brew system. That's the one to buy. Just, I, you know. I, I think so, yes. I mean, yeah, there's others, you know, same general ballpark on price, but I think that's the best one. Till then, Bruce Strong. Bruce Strong, everybody. Bruce Strong.